Hi, welcome everybody. In just a couple of seconds, I'm going to show you three amazing techniques that you will be able to use to transform your watercolouring into great crafting. If you haven't seen me before, my name's Tony Derrick. <coughs> I'm a guest presenter on Create and Craft TV. Um, I'm a studying watercolourist and artist. And this channel is on all about things to teach you and learn along the way, as I have done, um, do's and don'ts for watercolouring and things like that. So um, I'm here today to basically show you things like the things that I've made, errors I've made along the way and things that I've done and achieved really, really well. So maybe it can take the difficultness, difficultness out of it for you. Sorry, I can't get my words out. If you have discovered us and you're sat on Facebook right now, please like and share so everybody else can see, so all your friends can see. If you're watching, pop a comment below from wherever you're watching from, so we know who's watching, whereabouts you are, what you're exactly up to right now. <clears throat> and if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. I'm nearly at a thousand subscribers already and we've only been going a matter of months with regards to our studio so please subscribe it would be a great help and you also get the fantastic um, opportunity to watch all of our videos that we do because there will be lots of these videos with lots of hints and tips and techniques that you can use in your crafting um, come and join me in my crafting journey and we can do it all together so if you sat at home i hope you've got a coffee and you're all comfortable and you're ready to learn some great things now earlier today we sent out a newsletter saying that we would be showing casing some watercoloring techniques and that's exactly what we're going to do within this hour so i hope you're comfy and i hope you're going to enjoy the full hour of what i've got to show you like i said please comment if you're watching and um, let me know what you're up to where you are in the world so we can see who's actually watching so the purpose of this hour, um, if you watched our last um, live studio performance, should we say, it was a storm. It went down amazingly. Thank you ever so much to everybody that tuned in, watched the show, purchased the box project. I believe most of you have got them by now and a lot of you have been playing with them and have been blown away by them. So thank you so much. However, today's um, live studio is not about um, selling products in a sense. We haven't got anything posh and fancy to sell to you today. However, we ha I will be using products throughout the video. These are available on the website. So if you do like something, you can still purchase it. But today's video is more about showing you what you can achieve with watercolouring, um, do's and don'ts, what I think personally what I use are good, is good on the market and what I get along with and what I don't get along with and then you can take it home and do whatever you want to do with it, you can practice and see if it's something that you want to do in the future. So before I get started then there's a couple of things that I just wanted to run through so you um, can understand watercolouring. Now I cannot teach you the art of watercolouring within this hour, that is not achievable. Watercolouring is the hardest medium to learn, so and it can take years to learn it and master it. So I'm just going to give you the basic techniques that you can take home and potentially use within your card making today. So we need to get some things right before we even start. So <clears throat> as you all know, to paint we need brushes, we need cardstock or watercolour card. So I'm just going to run through a couple of the things that I use. Now don't take it as this is a given. All, these, all the products that I'm showing you today are products that I use, that I believe in, um, give you good results and things like that. So I'm going to run you through a couple of brushes and then I'm going to run you through some cardstock. Now again, the world of watercolouring, it's an expensive do, let me tell you. So if you are starting out, please do not go out and buy the expensive products because it could be a waste if you don't like it. And what all, us as general crafters, you know what we're like, we pick up that brush. If we can't do it first time, it's like, oh, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. And you throw it to one side and it never gets touched again. So I'm hoping that today I take a little bit of the frustration out of it for you and you can get some good looking cards. We'll also be making some cards as well. So before I start, I just wanted to show you a handful of brushes that I have in my kit when I watercolour. <coughs> so, as you can see from my hand here, I have a plethora of brushes, all different types of brushes. So, I would suggest that if you are just starting out, the two brushes that you really, really need are a round brush, so you can see there, a round brush and a flat brush. 
So these are the two brushes that predominantly I use 90% of the time. So the flat brush here, you can see, this is a brush that gives you the wash, wash technique on your cards and things like that. So this is to get water onto your cards. And the round brush is to get detail and to paint within lines of flowers and things like that. So the only thing you'll probably buy beyond there is a different size. So this one here is a size 16 brush but I've still got the same round brush here in a 8 and then I've got the same round brush in a 4 and I've obviously got my Eureka which is a 4 which is a round brush and that's why I put the round brush in the Eureka because I knew that this is the one that you would use 90% of the time. So don't go out and spend a fortune on your brushes. All you need is a flat brush and a round brush to start with. Okay, so <clears throat> the one that I use all the time is my Eureka brush. It's a size 4 brush. It works for my flowers, it works for my landscapes. So if you saw my landscape stamps before, the round brush, size 4, gets you all the detail in there. It's a nylon haired brush, so it works with lots of mediums. Obviously, I use it for watercolouring, but it works with acrylics, it works with your oils and things like that, as long as you give it a good wash. Okay, so that's the basic brush, a round and a flat brush. Now, you can get the brushes all over in the market. You can go down to your local store um, and get them, you know, try one, just a nylon haired brush, see how you get on with it. If it's something you love and you're thinking, right, I'm really ready for the next stage, then you can progress into something else. So this is a beginner's brush. So you can just see here, these are on the market readily available. It's a flat brush. It works perfectly for background washers. But as I've progressed, I've then progressed into a pro art brush. So this is a little bit more expensive, gives you a little bit of a better, smoother finish. So, you know, figure it out for yourself, guys. If it's something you really want to do, just step straight in and get the, the um, Dera brush. Now, they're not expensive to start with. You can start Billy Basic or you can move straight into, you know, your more... Um, pro ones so it's up to you I'm just this is just me giving you guidance it's up to you what you do okay so that's the brushes okay so just one technique before I move on to cardstock is when you have your water on your table like so Whatever you do, do not leave your paintbrush sat in the water like so. So you, you see it all the time and it sends my anxiety through the roof. You see everybody with all the paintbrushes sat in water like so. Unfortunately, these hairs in this barrel here are glued into place here, sometimes tied, sometimes tightened. If the water comes up the bristles and into the barrel, it will rot the barrel of your brush. And what you will find then is when you're painting, the hairs of the brush will just drop out. So you're trying to create a beautiful image and you're painting away and the hairs of your brush are starting to fall out. That's probably because you've left them sat in water, okay? please don't leave them sat in water. If you're paying money for good brushes, don't leave them sat in water or anything with a lot of moisture in there because you will, you will ruin them and it'd be such a shame when you've spent quite a bit of money. So that's the brush side of things. So secondly, I wanted to tell you about uh, cardstock. Now, it's a minefield is watercolour cardstock. There's hot pressed paper, cold pressed paper, cardstock, things like that. It's there's smooth, there's rough, there's coloured, there's white, there's cream, it's, it's never ending. Where do you start? Well, when I started, I started with cardstock, just your general white cardstock. So <clears throat> I've cut some cardstock pieces here and I'm going to show you the results you get with just general cardstock, okay? But I'm also going to show you my preferred um, watercolour cardstock. Now, again, it's my preferred watercolour cardstock. I'm not telling you that it's going to be yours. You might not like it, but all I say is what I've said with the brushes, you know, start with something simple, and if you like it, you can progress from there. So this is what normal white coloured cardstock. This does work as long as you don't wet it too much. If you wet it too much, you will get the awful cockle, which is the wave, and it will pill. So you'll get, like, paper starting to come away because it's telling you, basically, I've drank enough, I don't want any more. So um, it's a nice way to start, though, if you just start out and seeing if it's something that you like so that's normal colored cardstock white colored cardstock my my choice of um, 
watercolour card is something that's pre-cut. Um, I never do my cards huge, as you know, generally my cards never creep over a 5x7 and normally they are a top folding note card. So my preferred choice of watercolour cardstock is this Strathmore and it's ready cut watercolour cardstock. Now it's 5x7, we will be getting this in stock, um, but it is my choice. It is hot pressed which means it's, it's it has got an edge to it but it's not like chunky edge it's got a little bit of a grain on there it's um smoother than your general cardstock and it's white so i know that when i put um paint onto here it's going to give me the time i need to move it around and it's going to create great looking watercolor cards now i'll be honest with you this isn't the cheapest on the market but if you are wanting good looking results then this is the way to go and i'll show you a card using this watercolour card and I'll show you one using white coloured cardstock and you'll be able to see the difference. So you'll be able to see yourselves whether it's something you'd like to use. So that's that and we will be using that. So brushes, watercolour cardstock, what's left? Obviously the ink. So there are again a minefield of inks. You can use any inks you want, just try them. As long as they're water based you can do whatever you want. If you're wanting an abstract look and you're wanting something to be super bright you know it all depends on what inks you buy whether they're highly pigmented or not so i'm just going to run through you some of my inks that i use so as you know i'm going to be using my own inks i created them i wouldn't create them if i didn't think they were amazing so i have my watercolor wheel which is our 72 different colors on here so as you can see from the colors on there i, I use this quite a lot so you can see there how bright the colours are. These are amazing for watercolouring. You don't have to add a lot of water to get a good result. So these are my go-to inks. If I was to watercolour, I would probably use these. I also have my traditional watercolour inks, which are our reinkers for our ink pads. So, <coughs> you know, these are highly pigmented. You don't need a lot. You just put one drop in, dilute them with a little bit of water and, and basically you're away. You can see that I've already got them in my wells here from my last demonstration. I can just hydrate them with a little bit of water and I'm ready to go and paint. Okay, so these things that I'm showing you are um, crafting inks, should we say. So these are for card making, painting and things like that. However, I do, as I am a watercolourist, I do like to paint. I do have my um, professional paints as well. Now, you've probably seen these before. These are your pans, which um, go in your metal tin. These are Winsor & Newton. They are not cheap. But when I'm creating my lamination stamps, I need something that is going to um, come across really well, something that we can digitalise, something that we can make into a stamp. So these are the ones that I actually use. But again, start out with your normal watercolours and things like that, and then you will grow from there. So... That's all of that out of the way. I, I'm, I'm ready to move on to some demonstrations. So before we start, if you are sat at home on Facebook, please um, comment. Let me know what you're thinking, uh, what you're up to, whereabouts in the world you are, so we know who's watching. And again, on YouTube, please subscribe. So we get all the likes we need, you know, to create more videos and more inspiration for everybody. Because it's Sunday afternoon, it's cold outside, you know, let's, let's do some crafting together. So, I have a few stamps that I'm going to use as well. Now, like I said before, it's, this show really isn't about selling anything. However, if there is anything you like, we have got the codes for them. You can watch um, out for those. You can go onto the website, have a look, see if it's anything you like. So, the stamp that's on now, 439630, I'm going to actually use that in my next demonstration. But first of all, let's do the fun stuff. Let's do the watercolour inside of it. So... What we're going to do is I'm just going to show you a watercolouring technique where um, you can create a great looking look, should we say, um, with little, literally little to no effort. So just one second. First of all, I'm going to show you on this board the card. Now, I'm sorry it's on actually on a board, but it's, they're actually on other boards for when we do our shows and things like that. So it is this card here, so you can see it's got all a wash in the corner and I'll just pull it forward for you, there we go. So you can see how it's got this lovely wash in the corner here. So we can create this with our reinkers, you could create this with these traditional watercolours you have at home. So you know, just try it, I will show you how to try and get a smooth blend on there and then to stick a stamp on top how amazing it actually looks. So I'll just move that one out of the way. 
and we'll get together. So, firstly, right, she says when she gets organised. So what we're going to do is I've got some white card stock in. I'm just going to place it into the Eureka. And we will use the stamp that I've shown you in that on that picture. So it's this one here, which was um, just showed a second ago. So let's get some, some fun stuff together. So I've got the piece of cardstock and what I'm going to do to create that corner, which looks really, really lovely and fluid. So this is called a wet on wet technique. Now, if you haven't got a spray bottle at home, you could use a domestic one that you've had for something else in your stash. It doesn't have to be a crafty one, but I've just got this little brown bottle here and it's filled with water. So I'm going to create a little mist of spray on this corner here. So it's called wet on wet because what happens is the cardstock is wet and then I drop the colour in and then I spray it again to get it move even to move even more. So it's a wet in wet technique. So if anybody refers to that, you know that the cardstock is wet before you actually put the colour on. So I'm just going to spray this corner. And this is normal cardstock, so you'll be able to see how the cardstock moves. And as you can already see there. <coughs> excuse me the card is already starting to cockle that's absolutely fine because when we go to dry it out with our heat gun it will dry back okay so <clears throat> what happens with cardstock when you wet it is the fibers push each other apart and that's how you get the wave then when it's dry the fibers shrink and it goes back to its natural size so we're just going to use two colours in here. I'm going to use Generation Inks 03 and we've got purple and fuchsia. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how you can drop this colour in onto this cardstock and it will just bleed out. So I'm just going to make sure that card is wet before I go any further. Now I think I've done this demonstration before on TV, but um, just so you know what it's called now and how you can refer to it, it's called Wet in Wet. So I'm just going to drop some of this colour in and when you drop it down you will see the colour just splurge out so that's pink and then what we're going to do is we'll drop a purple in and what you will find is the colour will never go any farther than where the water is okay so as you can see the water here and all the way around that colour will never go beyond that line it's withheld and suspended in that water so I'm just going to get some water and I'm just going to help it move around a little bit. So I've got my wet brush and I'm just going to dab it. But what I'm going to do is before I go into this pink area here, I will clean my brush because I don't want it to contaminate. Because what you'll end up is, is like a nice purpley pink colour. We don't want that. So I'm just going to clean my brush off and then I'm going to move into the pink, move the pink around. Clean it again because all you will create is like a beautiful dark purple. And then clean my brush off and as you can see here we're getting a bit of a line i'm not happy with that so i'm going to spray it and get it to bleed out even more i don't like the solid line and then i'm just going to help it again with my brush turn your brush on its side and just dab the, wa the water will do the work for you you could take it right up to the corner if you want to but i just want it on one side Like so. So, going back to what I said earlier, um, normal cardstock. Can you see here how this cardstock here has like kept suspended some of the colour here? Suspended some of the colour here, that's just because it's normal cardstock. Now, that makes a beautiful background, in my opinion. You know, if you stamped an image on that, it would look absolutely gorgeous. But what I'm going to show you is I'm just going to move this and I'm just going to pop it to one side and let it dry. And we're going to do it onto some watercolour cardstock this time so you can see exactly what it, the different look you get from um, a watercolour cardstock and a general cardstock. So that was general cardstock what I used there. And this time I'm going to show you how it looks on a um, professional watercolour card. So I'm just going to pop this in the tool. And we'll spray this one with water. 
exactly the same fashion we won't do anything different and this time we'll drop we'll drop the same colors as well so you can see that you can be the judge of what you like what you don't like now can you see how it's moved further we'll do two pinks and we'll do two purples Now that colour hasn't moved because there's not enough water on the paper, but don't worry about it, we'll just spray it. So we'll get it to move around. Take a step back. So that is done in exactly the same fashion as the other one, but what you will find, because it is professional watercolour paper, when you get your clean brush clean with clean clear water on, when you come to move it around, what will happen is you won't end up with that circle. So I'm just doing the purple first. I'm going to clean my brush because I don't want to contaminate the purple into the pink. I'm just going to move that around. So you will see you won't end up with like a big spot in the centre of your page. So let's just pop a, pop a little bit of purple in this corner. So with all watercolours, if you let them dry naturally, they will look better, okay? They do look way better if you let them dry naturally. So if you do have a chance to let them dry naturally, then, then do that, because it does look better. But I'm absolutely happy with that. So I'll just pick the other one up and you'll be able to see the difference. So normal cardstock and watercolour cardstock. Can you see there? Again, it does make a fabulous background. So if you've got white cardstock at home, do try it. It makes a fabulous background you can make. But look at the difference here. So it's, it's not necessarily down to you as a human being on how your artwork turns out. It's all about the kit you use, okay? So as you can see there, if you'd have used those inks, you'd have probably thought, well, these inks are blooming rubbish. But look at the difference on watercolour um, cardstock. So it just goes to show it's all down to the kit you use. So I'm just going to, because we've done this one on the watercolour cardstock, I'm just going to blast that off with my gun. And then we can go ahead and complete the card. So has anybody um, tried this technique before? Um, done it at home? What, uh, what's the result been like when you've done it at home? Has it turned into an awful muddy mess? Or has it turned out to be absolutely fabulous? You know, drop us a comment if you're watching. You know, let us know how it's gone. We're open. Every, everybody does it differently. Not every, like I said to you earlier, not everybody does it the same way as me. I'm just showing you what I know, what I've learned along the way, um, in the hope that you, you guys at home can pick up some ideas, techniques, and things like that. So you can see how lovely this background is going to be when I put then when I put the stamp on it will just pop from the page. So make sure it's all completely dry before you go ahead because what will happen is when you come to put your black outline on in your black ink, um, it won't it won't um, adhere. You'll have to repeat stamp it until you get it absolutely perfect. So I'm just going to do it from the back as well, just to make sure it is actually dry. Do let it air dry if you do have the time at home, because it does look even better when you let things air dry. Okay, so I'm just going to clean my station down before I get an awful mess. So I'm just working on my mat. Just give my mat a wipe. Who's a messy crafter at home? <laughs> I try to be clean, honestly. So that's nice and clean now. So I'm just going to pop my artwork back into the Eureka, and what we're going to do is... we'll. <coughs> excuse me I've got a tickly cough I'm just going to stamp an image on here so you can see how amazing it looks now you can stamp the image as a solid in black or you can do it in your heat embossing it's entirely up to you but I'm going to just do it in black 
when I've cleaned my uh, magnets off because I don't want it to mess my artwork up. So we'll just hold it down the side here, I think. So we're going to use this stamp. And as always, in your Eureka, you place your stamp face down. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then when you're happy it's in place, pick up your artwork and we'll just use a black ink pad just so you can see how amazing it looks. So I'm thinking that this watercolour cardstock is still got a little bit of moisture in there so I might have to stamp this black side of it twice but we will see. Yeah, there you go. So that's what would traditionally happen with a block, you would not get a clear print. So I'm just going to have to ink it up. I might have to do it three times, we'll have to see, because this is actually quite a juicy black ink pad, so I know it's not the ink pad, it's what it's stamping onto. So it's not down to yourself at home. If you don't get a clear print, sometimes it's not you, it's what you're working on at home. That's a little bit better, but it's still not as dark as I'd like, so I am going to do it a third time. And with your Eureka, you don't have to put your body weight over, you know, it does touch the card naturally. So I'm just doing it three times because I want it to be really, really black. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see there how lovely that is. Now, if you wanted to go in and paint some detail within the flower head, you could actually do that. But I'm just going to stamp the sentiment this time. stamp out of the way and we'll use the same sentiment that's in the in the kit we'll just pop it up here in the corner make sure it's straight and we'll just do it in black ink again There is no key to happiness, just follow your heart. So if you mat and laid that onto a, a card now, that would be absolutely gorgeous. So it just this is just to show you the wet in wet technique. So can you remember what I did? I, I can't remember myself. I wet the cardstock with some um, water from a spray bottle, dropped the ink in, and then I used a clean brush to move the water around, but I didn't contaminate the colours. I moved one colour cleaned my brush, moved another colour, cleaned my brush and that's the process and that's how you get the vividness between the colours. If you use the same water you will just create a lovely bright purple coloury look but if you want individual colours after you've moved each colour around clean your brush. So I hope that's helped, it's a wet in wet technique, you can do it over a, a, a plethora of um, different things you can do with it, so do try it at home, you can create some beautiful sunsets, you know from the skies, purples down to pinks and things like that. So just while I clean off. So that's the stamp I just used, that's available on the website, 439630. So if you're wondering what the number is, you just pop that into the search engine at the top of our website and it'll take you straight to the product. Now I'm figuring a lot of you have already got this stamp and this is the reason why I picked this stamp um, because I knew that a lot of you would already have it and be able to probably pick it up this afternoon and have a play yourselves. But if you haven't got it and you really like it, then the opportunity is there for you to get it. So that's that one. So, the next one technique I want to show you is, I'll just move this one out of the way. So you could see there from the two different card stocks what you, could, what you get. But again, this, I'm not saying this one here, this one here, sorry, is wrong. It's not. It's a beautiful background. And if you stamped an image onto that, that would look lovely as well. But what I'm saying to you is, oh, it's upside down, sorry. What I'm saying to you is the watercolour cardstock gives you more vibrancy, it gives you more fluidity. So if you do want to get your paintbrushes out and have a really good go and understand how watercolour moves on card, then, you know, 
do go for the watercolour card. So that's that one. So just move that one out of the way. Let's move on to the next one. So, for the next technique then. So has anybody heard of, I think it's traditionally known as something called paper smooching. Now, you need some acetate for this at home. So this is just a piece of acetate. If you've got stamps from us or any company really, you can get the acetate from the backing sheet of your stamps. You can get a piece of acetate out of a, a window in a box that you've got. It's just a piece of the thin plastic that comes within, you know, a lot of packaging these days. So you just need, this is a five by five piece, but you can have anything you want. So I'm just gonna show you how to get a really lovely technique. So what I always do when I do my paper smooching is, first of all, I always stamp my image because I like the paper smooch inside of it to be around my image. So I'm just going to turn my mat over because I know that's slightly dirty from earlier. I'm just going to get the card so I can pop it in my tool. So the, cat, the um, stamp I'm going to use this time is um, the beautiful ways that you touch my life and it's this one. So this one's really, really popular and I know a lot of you have got this one. So I'm going to show you how to do the paper smooching, but I'm also going to show you how to make something, a flower that's white, look white on a piece of white cardstock, okay, because it's really hard to do that. But I've got um, a little bit of a technique up my sleeve that helps like white daisies pop from the page. So item number for this one is 402099. And again, just pop that in the search engine and it will take you straight to the product. So, again, stamping my um, Eureka face down, hold my artwork in place, and again, we will use a black ink pad. Now, because we're on the subject of watercolouring, um, you need a waterproof ink pad. Now, this VersaFine Black Onyx ink, what I use, is actually waterproof. Okay, so this is not good for alcohol markers, Copics, Spectrum Noir, it's no good. It will just bleed. This is specifically made i would say for watercoloring so if you don't want it to run your artwork then you need a waterproof ink and this is the ink that i use this is the one that i recommend if you've got one at home and it works and stick with it but this is the one that i actually use so i'm just going to close my door and pick up my stamp before i do that though i am just going to get rid of this um board underneath because i can see my board is sliding all over and I don't want it to slide. That's better. So close the door, pick up my stamp. And we're going to do it in black. So the ink pad I've just described. So I'm just going to ink up the stamp. I hope you're enjoying um, your Sunday afternoon with me. Thank you for tuning in. If you have tuned in, it is much appreciated. Uh, this is all brand new to us and we're absolutely loving it. Um, and from what I can gather, people at home are absolutely loving it too. So, um, if you're on Facebook, do drop us a comment, let me know what you think. So, there we have that one. I, me being me, I always do it twice. I don't know why, there is no necessity to stamp it twice. Um, the tool does it perfectly. But um, I am going to do it twice because I want the image to be super black. There we go. So make sure you clean off your stamp, keep it nice, pop it back on its carrier sheet, look after it. So, excuse me, <coughs> I'm just gonna move take this one out of the way, out of my Eureka for now. Move that to one side. And I'm just gonna get my mat. So you need a glass mat, a rubber mat, something on your surface to protect your surface for the next technique. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get two coloured ink pads. So any water-based ink pads you've got, a dye-based ink pads you've got at home, so let's go with the pink and purple. We're having a pink and purple theme today. I know Heather's watching and Heather will love this because it's her fa these are two are her favourite colours. So I'll just move that out of the way. So you need your acetate and what you need to do 
is you need to get your ink pad. I'm using deep uh, dark purple 03 and I'm just going to pop it onto my glass mat. Can you see the colour on there? What I suggest is always do one colour at a time. Um, it's just easier that way. You, you prevent contamination, the colours bleeding into one. You know, always do one colour at a time. So I'm going to do purple first. I'm just going to spray this with some water. Get it really wet. And then my acetate, all I'm going to do with the corner of my acetate see that the corner of my acetate I'm just going to pop it into the ink and it's going to pick up the ink can you see there it's sat on my acetate if I move it around there I'm just going to pick up the ink and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it onto my image like so in the areas where I want the ink to go can you see If you end up with like a square like that and you don't like it, use the clean side of the acetate and spudge it around. Like so. And this is how you get the like the splatter around your picture. It's a great technique, it's really, really easy to use. The acetate does all the work for you. Move your image around. And go all the way around your image. Don't worry if you go onto your image because that gives it a really good, like, abstracty look. So that's purple. So I'll just move that back round so you can see. There we go. Look. I'll just get rid of that line up there because that would um, frustrate me slightly. We don't want any harsh lines. And then I'll just clean that purple away. I'll clean my acetate and we'll move on to pink and let's get some pink in there. So again, oh, some pink on my, on my board. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just gonna spray this one with some water. And then with the same acetate, I'm just going to drop a little bit of pink in. Now you're probably thinking, oh, this looks absolute horrid mess. But when you bring the actual image that you've stamped to life, by adding a little bit of colour, it will look amazing. So there we have, so you can see there, already. We've got a little bit of an abstracty look there. Now, if you want to do the wet on wet technique, you can do that as well with this, just pre-wet your card before you go into with the smooching. So let's just clean this one down. So save your little piece of acetate because it will come in handy. So a great technique then to make your images pop from your page is um, using a, to make something look white you need to use something that's grey. Okay, so I'll just get this in shot for you. So I've got um, a Spectrum Noir pen here, I've got a Copic as well, so the Copic these are the codes I have here. So I've got uh, a brown grey 4, and a G7 and a C6. Okay, so this is Copic and two Spectrum Noirs. Now, um, you might have a grey pen in your stash already. Maybe not branded this way. This is just one that I choose to use. Okay, you don't have to use the same as me. So I would always say start lighter and build up. So I'm going to start with um, 4. I'm just going to show you the colour on a piece of scratch. So you can see there, next seven, and this is a six. These are alcohol based, when the alcohol evaporates they will dry way lighter. 
So what we're going to do is, I'm quite happy to go straight in with a dark pen and create some depth, so I'm just going to use the Copic marker, and this is a C6, a cool grey. Okay, so first of all, we want to make sure that these centres of these flowers are darker and it will give the appearance of a white flower. So you start in the centre, don't cover the whole of the flower. All you do is you do a flick in from the centre. Now when you start, you probably think, oh my gosh, um, that is so dark, it doesn't look right. Trust me, you know, give it some time it will dry a lot lighter. You'll probably have to go in with a dark pen. So this is how you get the appearance of a white flower. Feathering, so light brush strokes from centre to the pet centre out. And then these ones that are sat behind, these would naturally be darker. There is a shadow behind. So you could pop a shadow behind. I'm not going to do all three flowers, but you're starting to get the gist of how it's looking there. So just pop it behind. Now I can see on camera straight away that looks really dark, but I am absolutely confident that will dry way lighter. I can see it's already starting to dry now. So that's how you would create the white flower can you see already now how this area looks white just from adding that little bit of shading in the centre? Okay, so now what we need to do is that flower looks really flat on the page. So what we need to do is we need to 3D it from the page. And the way that we do that is we create a shadow around the image. So I'm just going to go in I'll change pens for you so you can see the difference. So we'll use the four for this one. So I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to outline this image and that will make it pop straight from the page so it looks 3D. And I will go all the way around. And you will instantly see this flower jump from the page. So again, persevere with it, it dries lighter, but honestly the results are amazing. So if you're looking at your work and you're thinking to yourself, I'm sick of my work looking really, really flat, well this is the way to give it a lift. So you would give that, just it's still not dry, I can smell it, it's a good indicator that um, it's not dry because you can still smell it. Um, give it a second to dry, now you can already see the difference from this flower to these two. Okay, so just that pen detail in the centre of the flower has made it look like it's opening and the shadow around has made it look like it's lifted off the page. So, you know, simple technique but so effective. And what I will do is I will just show you on this board a blue one. So you can see the shadow around and the grey in the centre and I've coloured the orange of this flower in here so you can see instantly that looks like it's sat off the page can you see that one and then all i've done is paper smooched in a blue and an orange around there so i'm just going to pop a sentiment on the one that we've already done so we'll just get the eureka Can you already see now that's drying lighter? I can see it. It does it, it does it in front of your eyes. It's really amazing, but puts people off because it's quite um, dark to start with. But trust me, alcohol evaporates, so it dries way, way lighter. So we'll use the sentiment from the same stamp set. So we'll do... Thank you for the beautiful ways you've touched my life. And I'm going to show you another technique on this one. So <clears throat> if I was to stamp this straight through here, which is what I'm going to do, this black area here is going to get lost within the daisy that I've just painted and coloured, but I'm going to show you how to make that pop from the page so it doesn't get lost, okay? Because I like my sentiments through my artwork, as you all know. So 
Remember, ladies and gents, everything that I recommend is something that I use personally, I find um, helpful. I've tried a lot of things and I've found something that I love and I'm just showing you the things that I love. Please don't take it as a given. You know, the things at home you use, if you've got something you love at home, stick with it. If you've been struggling and thinking, well, I never knew that or that's a great bit of kit, I'm going to get that, then that's brilliant. But, you know, everything I use is just things that I prefer. It's not, you know, I'm not saying that they are the best on the market, it's just what I love to use. So there you can see it's actually stamped really well anyway. I'm going to make it even blacker because that's what I like to do. And I can already see that the T has been lost within my image. It's actually, it is there and it's okay, that's fine, but I actually want it to pop because I, 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 th I find that that T is actually um, disappearing. So a great technique for you is if at home you have a white gel pen, um, I use this one, um, this is a Uniball Signal. Now I got this from like the likes of Staples or somewhere like that. Um, it's got a beautiful end on it, it's got a roll ball end on it. I find if I use gel pens and things like that, they, they scratch the paper and it drags across your paper, whereas this one, it just, it's like a, a can you remember your old Tipex pens, the, the ink used to flow, flow out. I find that that is um, a lot easier. So I'm just going to do this T on here for you, just to make it pop from the page. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to outline the T with my white pen so it blacks, so it covers everything else out. I'm just going to get it to zoom in for you so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Because it's quite difficult to see from a distance. Move my hand out of the way. So, as you can see, there's my T. I want that to pop from my page. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get my white gel pen and I'm going to go around that T. Now, you can instantly see the top of that T there. I'm going to come down. Can you see now my T? I'm going to just do it in there as well. And across there and up there. So, I'm just outlining the T that I've lost. Can you see now? That T instantly pops from the page. Now, if you want to, you can go around the whole sentiment and make it all stand out. I'm going to do a little bit around the H as well, so you can see. Can you see how your words come back to life? I'm just going to do it down that side again. See how it pops from the page. So, if you do lose a sentiment within some artwork, you can just go in and find it, you know, outline it with a white gel pen and it will co instantly come back to life. You see that? I can see that, that looks amazing. So can you see also as well the centre of this flower? It's dried back way, way lighter, so you can see the difference between this, this and this. Now, traditionally, I would outline that in a grey pen. That's a, a grey-brown pen um, and it was just for the demonstration, but, you know, give it a go with your grey pens and it does really, really look amazing. Let's mount this onto a card. And then you'd be able to see what it looks like. So I'm just going to use some glue for speed. And we're running out of time and I just wanted to show you one more um, watercolouring technique. As I did say, there was three. So I'm just going to mount this onto here. You know, you, you guys at home, take care with it, take care, take the time you need, you know, you're not under any pressure like me at the moment, you know, to get things out. So when you're sticking things down, use tape and glue if you have got the time. So just before I lift this up, I'm going to show you. So this is the pink one, the one that I showed you earlier was blue and um, orange. So and there we have. There we go. So you can see the bottom flower there, how amazing that looks. And the T pops from the page just simply by adding an outline with a white gel pen. So I really do hope that's helped. And I think a lot of people were waiting for this technique, you know. So give it a go at home. If you've got any stamps in your stash, you don't have to have any of my stamps to achieve 
you know this sort of artwork if you if you have a limited budget and you've only got a few in your stash play with what you've got you know <clears throat> you are your own creativity basically so it's down to you and what you put in and then what you get out is a fantastic result so that item number for that one is 402099 um, I'm being told that's nearly gone so um, if you are interested in that one make sure you grab it quickly but I do know that a lot of people of you have already got that because it's one of my earlier ones one of my best ones should we say so I'm just going to show you um, one more technique before we finish because time's running thin again if um, you're on Facebook please comment if you're enjoying it if I'm doing everything you've all asked me to do I know that some of you did ask me to do some die cutting and some paper piecing now I am back on air on um, Wednesday at seven o'clock so I'm hoping that I'll be able to do a bit of die cutting and paper piecing with some of our synergy di synergy dies and showing you you know that you can get lots of things out of one die because that was the purpose of them so that's on Wednesday but also please don't forget that I'm back on um, Create and Craft the big studio on Friday and Saturday Friday morning 10 o'clock and Saturday at four o'clock so that's in the big studio in Peterborough um, and I'll be have a demonstrate I'll have a guest sorry I'll have a um, presenter at the side of me so I won't have to talk as much which will be amazing because <laughs> it's really difficult to talk all the time I'm sure my other half would tell you differently but um, yeah it's really difficult so I'm just going to show you an, another lovely technique if that's okay so ahead of time I've got another black top folding note card for me and my top foldings and I've matte and laid some black cards glitter card stock onto there you can see how lovely that is and I have die cut one of our stitch detail dies so you can see it's got like a stitched detail around there so this creates depth with with hardly no effort then so if your artwork is quite minimalistic you know the stitch detail just gives it that extra bit of class in my opinion and we're going to use this lovely one so this was one of our earlier stamps so this is the lamination stamp so you've got your solid portion which is black where you would put your colour and then you've got your outline on here now I'm going to use a lamination stamp but I'm going to show you how you can create a watercolour finish around it so it doesn't look like it's floating on the page. So it's a bit of similar to a wet in wet technique but basically you'd <coughs> excuse me, you don't drop colour in, you use it with your paintbrush. The item number for this one's 407445. So this is the lamination two part stamp. So um, just pop this piece of cardstock into um, the Eureka. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the solid portion first of the stamp. So the solid portion of your stamps, when you buy our lamination stamps, they are always the black part of the stamp. And this is where you would use your colour, coloured inks and things like that. So this is a brand new stamp. So I'm just going to place it face down into my artwork. She says, I've got two magnets here. I don't know why I've got all these magnets in my Eureka. It's not like they are all needed. And then we will pick the stamp up and we will use some coloured ink. So we'll go for the pink again because it's to hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up the, the heads of the flowers with the pink ink pad. Now I'm not overly concerned if some of the pink goes on to where there should be leaves because watercolouring is naturally loose, it's fluid, you get colours that mix naturally so I'm not going to prevent them from mixing, I actually want them to do that. Now that I've put that on there I am just going to spray it with some water it's because I really do want it to look like a realistic flower. So when you come to stamp it down what will happen is you'll see the water move on the card. So again this is normal cardstock. So this shows you that it does work on normal cardstock. There we have the flower heads. So that it could be tulip heads, it could be anything you wanted. You could go in with your paintbrush now with a bit of clean clear water, pick up some of the orange if you wanted to and you could drop a little bit of orange in there. You know, you can absolutely play till your heart's content with colours, you know, creating light and shade. And then what we'll do is we'll get the leaves on so it looks more like a realistic flower. Don't look like the heads of the flowers are floating then. So I'm just going to clean this one off and we'll use a green ink pad this time. 
and we'll ink up the green part of the, the stamp. I'm just going to wipe away the green on the that part there because that's not needed. And then again I'm going to spray with some water, make it look more realistic. And then when you can see the green there, look, so when you come to put your green part down, you'll end up with more of um, a field of flowers rather than some floating flowers. There we go. So that's not the end of that stamp, so you could actually leave it like that. You could do it in muted colours for a sympathy card, you know, you could do whatever you wanted to do with it, you know. I did one of these not so long back just in blues, it looked absolutely stunning, so... You know, get the most out of your stamps, you know, they're not the cheap, um, they're not cheap aren't stamps these days, you know, we appreciate that, so you need to get absolute um, use out of them as much as you can, batch stamp and things like that. So this time, I've got the outline um, side of things, now you could stamp this in a pencil if you want, it, sorry, in a grey ink and it will look like a pencil drawing, you can stamp it in black ink, you can stamp it in heat embossing, okay, so it's entirely up to you you know what you do with your stamps there are no rules and I'd love to see what everybody's been creating if you don't know of our Eureka fan page we have a fan page where people post all their makes so you can go on there the the design team are in there so if you have any problems any questions their makes are amazing but customers on there as well their makes are honestly you wouldn't believe the stuff that they do it's absolutely amazing. There's some ladies that post every day. Sandy Irvine's one of them. You know, she posts every day, bless her. I'm sure she won't mind me saying she's at home in a wheelchair, so she spends most of her time crafting. She posts daily. We've got other crafters on there that post daily. And um, there's another lady on there called Barbara who, um, you know, she really does think outside the box when it comes to our stamps. Um, and she does some amazing work. So go on there. All you have to do is request to be part of the group. One of the design team members, Karen, will, or Karen or Elaine, will accept you, and then that's it. You, you're in, and it's, it's it is really really lovely. You, you honestly, you'll, you're missing out if you're not in it. That's all I can say. It's mind blowing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of heat embossing on this one, just for a little bit of difference because we've used black ink. So if you are going to heat emboss, you need an anti-static bag. This gets rid of all the moisture in the card. This prevents all the messy bits and ugliness of your card. So you want your card to look absolutely gorgeous. So, and then I'm going to use our Fab Ink. Now, if you got our box the other day, this was in there. It was limited edition with the box. This will be a separate entity on its own. Uh, however, the stamp that was in the project box is a limited edition and it's um, literally gone. So you cannot get that anywhere else. But you'll be able to purchase the um, Fab Fine Art Bonding Ink if you require an embossing ink. So I'm just going to ink up the outline of this stamp. I'm just going to get it really, really covered. And all I would suggest is if you are heat embossing, make sure you do it twice because um, you can't see it and we wouldn't want you to miss. So do it twice if you've got the facility to do it twice. And the great thing about heat embossing also is it acts as a resist. So if you're not the most confident colourist in the world, it's not a drama. So I'm just going to get rid of this and pop, get a piece of card. We'll use some uh, gold embossing powder. So there you can see there how lovely that is. So when you come to heat emboss that, that'll look amazing. So I'm just going to quickly heat emboss that. So when you heat emboss, make sure you get your gun good and hot. It prevents cockle in your card. There's nothing no worse than a wonky card. Um, and it's more difficult to stick to a card blank if the card is actually um, beveled and cockled. So get your gun good and hot. Less time on the card, less warp in your card, should we say. So I'm just going to quickly heat this one up so you can see how gorgeous it looks when it's finished. And then I'm going to do a wash.
So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to show you quickly before we run out of time how to get the wash in the background, okay? So the key to this one is a wet brush. I always like to do big for background. Um, background this is a size 12 so I'm clean clear water and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop some water around the image and I'm just going to wet I'm not going to touch my image I'm just going to do it around so lots of clean clear water around and again this is like the wet on wet technique but this is in a more controlled fashion so you're not going to drop your ink in you are going to put it in with your paintbrush but it's going to be in a more controlled fashion You know when it's covered because the card stock will go shiny. So I'm going to use the orange in my well because I don't want to waste it. So I'm just going to pick up some of the some of the orange and because my card stock is wet, when you come to pop it, pop, pop it in, can you see what's happening there? Now I want that to be a bit more translucent, so I'm going to add some more water. So remember the ink and paint will only go where the water is. If there's no water, it won't go there. So because I've got the um, embossing on there as well, that will act as a resist. could drop other colours in there as well if you wanted to. And remember, as I've said throughout the, the purpose of this video, it dries lighter. Okay, so if you wanted to get in closer, you could. But remember, the more water you add, the easier it is to move. Okay, so I would naturally let that dry. And you'll end up with a wash. I don't know if you can see that there. So I would naturally let that air dry. And then what happens is I'm not gonna stick it on because it's wet and we're running out of time. But you'll pop it onto your base card You would end up with a beautiful looking card. So I hope you can see that. You know, if you don't like the harsh lines, just get a clean brush with some clear water on and drag the colour out. It's so easy. I hope today has been um, helpful. I'm running out of time. Um, so as I said before, if you're on YouTube, please subscribe. It would be amazing to get um, lots of followers. So, uh, you know, help me create more videos and more inspiration for you. If you're on Facebook, um, you know, please watch on Facebook and comment. Um, if you've seen anything you like, what you've thought, your techniques, have you tried them at home? Is it something you love? Have you had um, nightmares with it? What's been the problem? Or if it's been a success, please do let us know. Um, and there's just one more thing I wanted to show you is last time when I did my stencils, people were asking about the micron pens. Now we have got the micron pens in stock. We have a set of black micron pens, but exciting news is we've got the set of colored micron pens as well. So if you wanted to do outlines a lot around your leaves in green, outlines around your flowers in colours then we have the set of pens for that the item number for that one though is 201524 and on Wednesday when I do some die cutting I'm going to be demonstrating these ones and the black ones are 201525 so don't miss out if you if you're in need of those I know some of you have purchased them and that's brilliant but for those of you that need them and haven't got them then the opportunity is there to get them so thank you ever so much for tuning in I'll be back with you on Wednesday with some more hints tips and techniques and I hope it's been helpful so have a great evening stay safe stay cozy and I will catch you all later bye